focus your mind on the breath. And as you focus it here, you're going to begin to realize after a while that it's not just one mind. You've got lots of minds. Some minds want to stay with the breath, other minds want to go s flying around with the crows and the hawks. So you've got to decide which mind you're going to side with and encourage that mind. This is a factor of what's called right effort. It's one of the factors also that acts as a protector for you. Because what's going to protect you from your own unskillful states if it's not your own efforts? Realizing that it depends on you to fight them off, and then giving rise to the desire to fight them off. All too easy we give in to the, the lazy voices that say, oh, it's too hot to practice outside, or I'm too tired, or what. But the defilements of the mind, they don't worry about whether it's too hot or too cold. They can come in at any time. In fact, they tend to come in most often when it's way too hot or way too cold, or you're really tired. All the other excuses that you give for not putting up your effort, they seem to be impervious to whatever the situation is outside. Greed can come at any time. Delusion can come at any time. Anger can come at any time. It doesn't say, oh, it's too hot, I'm too, too hot to be greedy, or I'm too hot to be deluded. So why is it that our efforts tend to depend on whether it's too hot or too cold or that kind of thing? You have to decide regardless whether you feel like it or not. You've got some duties you've got to take care of. Because if you don't protect yourself from your unskillful states when they're in a small form, they're going to just get bigger and bigger. They don't just go away. They may seem to go away for a while, but then they come back and they bring their friends. It makes it even harder. And they know the ways in the ways out because it's a rut in the road in your mind where these things come in and go out all the time. So you've got to fight them off. You've got to remind yourself that it's up to you to find true happiness, that your desire for true happiness is something that's worthy of respect. Nobody else can protect that desire for you. Nobody else can act on it for you. These are things you've got to do for yourself. And if you don't protect that desire, what are you going to protect? What will you have left if you let all the other things that will come trampling over your mind? So remember that your desire for true happiness is something that really is deserving of respect, and it's something that you want to protect at all times, even when it's way too hot or way too cold, or you're tired or it's late or it's early. It doesn't really matter when or what the situation is outside. If something unskillful comes in the mind, you've got to get rid of it. If something skillful is there, you want to encourage it. You want to look after it so that it can grow. This is the factor of right effort, and it's the fact that really gives protection to the mind. There's hardly anything else in the world that can protect you the same way that your own desire for true happiness. And your willingness to protect that desire for true happiness can give you protection. Because without that, what are you left? Just wandering around, wandering around. Where does it ever end? If you don't put an end to it, it's not going to end on its own. It just keeps going and going and going. So ask yourself, what do you really want out of life? If you want true happiness, you've got to protect that desire. And you have to protect it through your own efforts. You can depend on others to give you inspiration, to give you advice, but the actual work is yours. And so when you realize this for yourself, give rise to the desire and the persistence to stick with it. So that true happiness you desire, after all, is not just a desire anymore. It's something you actually experience for yourself. This is the only way it's going to happen, so make sure that you protect the desire all the way to the end. 